The bombing yesterday at the Kabul airport claimed the lives of 13 American troops and 90 Afghan citizens. Thanks for choosing us tonight at 6. I'm Deborah Kendrick. And I'm Lucas Geisler. We've learned today that one of the Marines that was killed was from Missouri. 20-year-old Jared Schmitz of Wentzville near St. Louis died in the attack. That's according to his father. ABC 17's Hannah Falcon is live at the Boone County Courthouse where just an hour ago veterans and local leaders placed a wreath and 13 flowers in honor of those who died in the attack. Hannah, you sat down with an expert to find out more about ISIS-K, the group that took responsibility for the attack. And Hannah, ISIS-K has been around for years. Yes, it's Deb Lucas. ISIS-K is called one of the deadliest terrorist groups in the world. Part of the ISIS-K motivation with this attack seems to be to undermine perceptions both internationally and domestically within Afghanistan that the Taliban can constrain transnational terror groups. The deadly attack yesterday at the Kabul airport in Afghanistan raised many questions. What is ISIS-K? What do they want? Why did they attack American troops? I sat down with Dr. Rebecca Best, a political science expert from the University of Missouri, Kansas City, to get answers. Most people believe ISIS-K when they say it was them because they have the most to gain from this attack. That's how I see it. I, I, I don't see another group that stands to gain quite as much from this attack. ISIS-K formed in 2015 and covers the Khorasan region of Asia. Many of their key figures defected from the Taliban. What ISIS-K wants is to make the Khorasan region, including Afghanistan, part of a larger global Islamic state caliphate. So in other words, they're rejecting essentially the state system. Yesterday's bombing allowed ISIS-K to attack the Taliban and the United States. Looking forward, future attacks are likely, but what is the most concerning is how this will affect life in Afghanistan. Reporting live from Columbia, I'm Hannah Falcon, ABC 17 News.